I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I am more depressed than I ever have been in my life. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. And this one, we might not do it, Bally. I hate you. I'll go ahead and give the listener a, a warning. This one, we might we might have uh, dug ourselves too deep. Uh you dug the hole. I I picked this one because I, I wanted, watched, but you know, I wanted to to. You know what? I don't have an excuse. <laughs> I just really like this movie and wanted us to try and see if we can do it. And I want an excuse to watch it again. So this was it. Why? <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about the movie? What your relationship is? This is your first time seeing it, right? I yeah, I watched this movie yesterday for the first time. I did not know any. I knew. It was part of Gus Van Zandt's what depression trilogy or whatever it's called. Uh, I don't know, nah, I don't whatever know, he called, know what it's called. Which it it's Jerry, which I've seen. Mm-hmm. This, which I had not, and Last Days, which is basically him making a movie about Kurt Cobain mm-hmm. with uh, Michael Pitt. I saw that, mm-hmm. meh. But so I've seen those two. So I was like, okay, it's, I mean, it's not going to be a happy movie. Otherwise, we would not be doing it, right? Well, that's not true. And Bruges is kind of happy. Yeah, you're right. Um, it's got that ending, well, man. Well, still. I wasn't expecting M. Bruges out of this movie. Oh, no. I, was, I was expecting something, you know, kind of, you know, some high school kids talking about depression or something like that. Mm-mm. Uh, mm, yeah. Did not expect uh, what we got here. Yeah, I think Fuck. I saw this movie when I was like, uh, maybe like 18. I had a, like a, a habit of like, tracking down movies that like everyone's like you need to see these you need to see this you need to see this and this was one of them and along with jerry actually i watched the, i actually saw jerry for the first time a couple of years ago but i saw Jerry's elephant before then one. do you like this movie more than jerry or less i mean let me rephrase that if you had to watch another one again you'd watch jerry right i don't know well yeah yeah <laughs> let's Let's talk again. About this, the movie. I'm I'm a little fresh out of this one. To yeah, let's talk about the movie. I'm and still in shock because if if you're not familiar with it, the film is called Elephant. The year is 2003. Director is Gus Van Sant. Uh, director of this Jerry Paranoid Park. Uh, what's that one he just did with Matthew McConaughey about the forest? It's called like something trees. Um, oh sea God. Of trees? something like that. Apparently, it was not good. Yeah. Uh, starring in. I'll, I'm just going to speed through this because there's a lot of people in this cast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex Frost, which is a d- badass name. Eric Doolin, John Robinson, uh, Eli McConnell, Jordan Taylor, Carrie Finkley, Nicole George, Brittany Mountain. That's a badass name, too. Uh, Alicia Miles, Kristen Hicks, Benny Dixon, Nathan Tyson, Timothy Bottoms, and Matt Malloy. Malloy. Malloy? 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 Okay. A budget of only three million, worldwide gross of ten million. This was like a HBO made for TV kind of movie, uh, but seventy two percent certified fresh made on for Tomatoes. premium TV. Oh, excuse me. It was like I said, seventy two percent certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, Mr. Van Sant won Best Director at Cannes for this film. Uh, hmm. We should before we get into the trailer, uh, we should talk about what this movie is in case people aren't familiar with it. Um, like most of our movies, I would say you probably should see it before you listen to the episode, but this one's going to be kind of a different episode because uh, this movie is very, it's not slow. I I don't think it's slow. No, it's, I mean, it's very gripping. Um, it's just, I think not a lot happens, not a lot happens and the subject matter is very dark. Some people may be uncomfortable with. Yeah. We're not going to be our usual selves on this episode. I would say I've been my usual self since last night when I watched this. (laughs) Um, but if you're not familiar with this movie, this movie is basically Gus Van Sant's fictional take on Columbine, the the high school shooting, and was it ninety eight? Um, uh, I want to say uh, I don't know. Yeah, I th- he originally guess. wanted to do basically a true to life, like what happened that day with real people's names and everything, but he chose to do this instead. Um, so yeah, this is a very dark movie. Nineteen ninety nine. Ninety nine was the Columbine shooting, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but let's listen to the trailer, and you'll get an idea of what we're what we're talking about. Mom's gonna kill you. What? What are you doing, Dad? I'm driving. Get out of the car, Dad. Jessica? This is uh, 
this is not going to do it. These long pants. Everybody else is wearing shorts. What's the matter? I don't want to talk about it. He's so cute. Cool. So cute. He has a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Since when? You didn't know that? No. Okay. Oh, great. The question what they do um, is that they will sit up in this higher energy state. Where are you riding? Oh, uh, this? Yeah. It's my plan. For what? Oh, yes. Sir. What are you doing? You got to don't come back. Hey, sir, don't go in. Sir, don't go in there. Don't, trust me, just don't go in there, please. What do you think about this trailer? I mean, it doesn't really spoil the movie. Mm -hmm. It also really doesn't tell you anything about the movie. Yeah. So I'm just kind of, it's just kind of there. <laughs> I, I kind of wish they would have kept out that one shot of. Yeah, the Eric element of Alex. Alex and Eric's entering yeah. in with the duffel bags. That would have made it, yeah. But then again, I think you might kind of need that so people don't go into this. So otherwise, it's just a bunch of kids Completely talking. blind, yeah. Because if you don't know what this movie oh, is Oh, sorry. About, it's the second film in Gus Van Sant's Death Trilogy. Death Trilogy is what it's called, yeah. So, yeah, I get that now. So, yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into this episode? No. All right. I will say, first things first, is this this movie's got a very minimal, but like very ominous, haunting score. Oh, I love the music in it. Yeah. And it usually accompanies... That, that's, we were talking about this earlier. That's one thing... <laughs> That I said I enjoyed. Yeah. It, it, it's usually accompanying like shots of like the sky as like clouds are rolling in. Yeah. Um, but also the first thing I noticed was this movie was shot in a, f a four three aspect ratio, which I hadn't, hadn't seen that. And God, so and especially in two thousand three, we were way past standard yeah. at that point. So it's crazy to see a movie in four three, which kind of bothers me. I really <laughs> don't like four three movies. It I don't know. It really bothers me, and I. Yeah. Um deal with it? I yeah. don't know what to tell you. No, no, it's fine. Um it just takes me so long to get into. Um anyways, we start the movie like I said with some clouds and some some shots of clouds and uh we see a car barreling down a, a rural street. Rural. 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 Yep. God, rural. dude, get it together. That's too many R's in one word. Rural. It's street. two. Yeah, it's too many. It's it two R's. One too many. Uh, there's this car that's kind of clipping other cars uh, as it's going down the street and almost running over a bike rider. Um, and we got a title card that just says John. Uh, and it's this kid, dun, John, dun, John. With the wackest like haircut the, of all I was going to say, he's got like a blonde, early 2000s emo kind of cut going on. Like, this is like, all right. A lot of people, when they think that emo haircut, they think that like kind of shorter with the swoopy bang. Mm -hmm. Nah, this haircut predated that. It's, it's a weird this was it's This like was the haircut those kids rocked before they discovered they could cut off everything except the bangs. It's like a Kurt Cobain kind of cut. Like early uh, Kurt. Cause it's got really. It's got like that swoop kind of thing to it, but it's like shoulder length and it's all the same length It's all pretty around. much. So these like these kids, This these are my people. <laughs> Back in the day, these were my people. Mm -hmm. We'd grow our hair out, but we wouldn't rock that Kurt Cobain middle part. You swooped it. So it's with bangs. It's basically the Kurt Cobain cut with bangs. It's just not a yes. middle part. Yeah. And see, that evolved into the... The bob. The cut all, <laughs> the rest of your hair short, leave the swooping bang. Yeah. See, there was an evolution to that. And I should make an amend. My my clue for the last week was buffalo shirts. It's not a buffalo. It's a It's a bull. It just it. I don't know. I hadn't seen this movie in so long. You I, fucking liar! <laughs> I thought it was a buffalo. Trump's America. Yeah, um, but his his he's actually in the passenger seat, and his dad is driving the car, and his dad is drunk, and is just driving him to school. Um, and like I said, just clipping cars in this neighborhood as it's going by. They switch seats, and John drives to school, and then we get a we we cut to another another kid who's kind of making his way 
across the field or something like that towards, I guess, going to school as well. And he's got a uh, a camera around his neck. Nerd. Yeah, and he comes across two punks. Uh, yeah. No other way to describe it. They're just straight up punks. Uh, and he asks to take their photos. And I think it's funny because the girl is, uh, he says, you know, what, she says, why do you want to take your photos? He says, oh, I need it for my portfolio. And she says, what's a portfolio? I thought it was really interesting that a teenage, well, she's probably at least 15, 14, 15, 16, doesn't know what a portfolio is at this point. What are they teaching these kids in the school? I mean, I don't think that, that's that's uh, that, that weird. You don't know what a portfolio is? He's, well, okay. But he, he takes their photos and he heads off to school. And we got, we cut back to John, who has also arrived at school and goes inside. Uh, he tells his dad to stay in the car because his dad's drunk. And he goes inside and goes to a payphone, which I got to ask you, do you remember high school yep. with payphone? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. We never had those. Okay, keep in mind, I'm from the middle of nowhere. I, was say, I feel like Southern schools are more sheltered. So we are, my high school was like behind the times by a few years. So yeah, no, I'm pretty sure we had pay phones. We didn't. At least, wait, actually, if we did, I never looked at them. Because by the time I got to high school, I had a flip phone, so. Oh, no, man, dude, cell phones, like, when I was in high God, I'm old. Uh, no, when I was in high school, like cell phones weren't huge by any means. Well, they weren't huge, huge, like, but people like my freshman, like my freshman year, people were getting flip phones around that time, like Motorola flip phones and learning oh, about and man. texting it, like texting that wasn't, well, no, I guess it was still, uh, T9 kind of texting. Yeah, like man. T9. I never Throwback. liked it. Never liked it. I couldn't it. get into it. No. Wasn't my thing. Uh, but he's in there. He's, he's he gets on his phone. I guess he's calling Skynet. like like his brother maybe, and he's saying, "Can you come pick Dad up?" And yeah, yeah, it's his brother. While he's doing this, the principal arrives and tells him to come to his office. <clears throat> and he follows the principal into the office. And the office and the principal just kind of gives him like this stare down, like you know what you did, kind of look. Mm-hmm. But we cut to uh, like a, a PE class, and there's just a bunch of guys playing tackle football, which again I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, behind that's behind the times a little bit. I, I mean, if school it, settings, I mean, if it was like if it was like a practice or something like for the football team, mm-hmm. I would get it. But that's not what this is. It's yeah, like no, this is gym class. It's just guys playing basketball in like their clothes, like car playing like basketball? cargo pants. Oh, oh, sorry, football in like cargo pants. So <laughs> maybe it's not school sanctioned. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I thought this was before school, the, before school started, but it's not. This is like during lunch because. They make a he make, John makes a comment that he had lunch with his dad, and like that's why they're he's in trouble because he skipped out on school basically right. during lunchtime. Uh, but anyways, there's this just this shot of these these people playing football uh, that goes on for a really long time, and all of a sudden this girl enters. There is a lot of things in this movie that go on for a really long time. Oh, I was gonna we'll get, get into there. that, yeah. But this kind of nerdy looking girls with glasses and a hoodie steps in a frame, and she kind of just like stargazes for a minute, like. Up at the clouds or cloud gaze, I guess. She has a name. I wish she does, but we have, we don't learn it yet. I'm going to introduce characters You're by right. name okay. by the okay. the way the movie okay. does. So this nerdy girl is just kind of like in the middle. She's kind of just looking around and she just kind of darts off. And we get to watch the football game a little more. I should mention the camera doesn't move during this. It's just locked down and just yeah. watching these kids play Oop. football. Didn't mean to bump that. And uh, this, this guy who was playing football enters frame and puts on a hoodie and basically makes his way to class and we get he's got a lifeguard hoodie on too which i thought was kind of interesting because that comes into play later on mm. um i gotta say i had a lifeguard hoodie kind of similar to this one that i missed dearly of course you did yeah um and this is one of the first of many long follow scenes we get there they, are uh they are abundant mm-hmm. there are many there are a lot and I love them. Basically, it's just it's literally just the camera behind the person following them as they walk, like a steady cam, basically. Like, and it goes on for a long time. They're very like when you think about it, they're simple because in most of these, the characters aren't really doing anything. Yeah, they're just walking, maybe saying hi to some but people. But there's atmosphere. There's a lot of atmosphere. And I, all right, I'm a sucker for long takes. Me too. For Holy long one shit. And there's a, there are plenty of them in this. There movie. are so many, which is. This fuck this movie. <laughs> so this character is. This I guy. keep wanting. I keep wanting to say like redeeming things about this movie, but I can't get past 
the fact that I fucking hate it. That it's based on a true story? No, that it just... Or that's just a movie that... Fuck gets this you. movie, man. <clears throat> but yeah, he's he's walking. I guess he's walking towards the principal's office. He goes pretty much... We follow him all across campus. Yeah. And this is a big school. And I gotta say, why aren't, why aren't all these kids in class? I like, don't know, because I would have been fucking... Like, we if been you trouble. walked into my high school while during class hours, it was like you could see the tumbleweeds, which... Where I went to school, there actually were tumbleweeds, but, but that's even, beside the point. Even this is in between classes. There are kids out here that are break dancing. That well, dude, even in board. between classes, like I don't know about you, but in my high school, we had ten. Well, you had ten minutes. Seven to, to ten, to ten minutes yeah. to get from one class to the next. Like we didn't have time to break dance. No, no you had time to piss and grab your shit from your locker. Yeah. And that was it. But yeah, it's, um, he's walking through and he, he enters this this one building and he walks past this trio of girls. And this is one of the first of a few times that this movie does this. But as he's walking by, the camera kind of cuts to slow motion. It turns to the girls, and we see that one of the girls looking at him mouths the words "so cute," saying that the guy is very cute. And he meets up with uh, presumably his girlfriend. And this is where we get the title card for these these two characters, Nathan and Carrie. Nathan is Nathan the guy and Carrie is the guy in the lifeguard hoodie and carries his girlfriend. Uh, but we cut back to the principal's office, and apparently John has got detention. And I guess Boom. I'm assuming just for stepping out uh, during lunch hour or whatever. And don't mess with the bull, son. You'll get Carrie, the horns. Carrie and Nathan enter the, the wrong detention movie. <laughs> Carrie and Nathan enter the principal's office as John is walking out, and apparently check themselves out of school. Okay, that is not. I'm sorry, that's not you can't possible. Do that? No, <laughs> he just got detention for leaving for lunch on lunch. Yeah. This is supposedly after lunch. Because Nathan's even like, yeah, we'll be back around like one thirty or whatever. And I was like, you can't just you do can't that. just leave. <laughs> maybe, is that what the, this whole thing is? Is like John got in trouble for doing it, for not, maybe not asking? And then Nathan and Even so, out. why can, what school is this? You can just check yourself out. Um, but John, we follow John, and he enters an empty room and... Kind of have like like a silent. Okay, in stop. what looks like a hotel room to me, like, like a, a hotel big, lobby or like, like a, a hotel banquet hall. Kind of like no, like kind of like, like yeah, like a banquet hall without the like, table. What is this fucking room? I'm assuming this is like a band room or something, and there's just no instruments out or like uh, chairs. There's nothing in this. Well, we room. only get to see like two walls. There's like room. a small desk and like two like small armchairs, and that's about it. Yeah, it's like what? I don't get it. So I gotta ask: Do you think he's in this room having? He, he sheds like a, like a tear or two. Is this because of his dad being an alcoholic or something, or do you think it's something deeper than that? Because we, I gotta say, we for the most part we get these characters on a very surface level. Oh yeah, you don't really dig too deep into Not any at all. of them emotionally. Um, you know, yeah, they say I most mean, movies are either plot or character driven. I feel like this one is like pseudo neither. Yeah, it just kind of happens, and you're kind of along to like watch as it happens. I mean, later on, but um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you gonna say? I don't even remember. All right, well, this girl enters uh the room and sees John. She says hi. He says hi. She comes over to him. She says, "Why are you crying?" And I don't remember his response. But he says, "No reason or whatever." She plants a kiss of him on a cheek, which. I don't know if these two characters know each other because the way they inter- the way they say hi to each other seems very formal, like they don't like they're not friends or whatever. But she kisses them on the cheek, and then we get a new title card that says Acadia. Yeah, a badass name, first of all. Yeah, and then we're in this room, and I guess she she's in this this. It's kind of like a well, yeah, because we see her walk into the room, and someone's like, "Oh, hey, Acadia." And yeah. Then we get this like tracking. This, this shot of everyone yeah, in the room. We're in like the middle of like an AA circle, and we're just kind of slowly yeah. circling across as we're looking like at catching everybody. Catching bits and pieces of every conversation. And this is what they're talking about. They're basically positing the question up for discussion of, can you identify someone as being homosexual just by looking at them? Yeah, this is a... This is a I gotta ask, question. in the context of this movie... What does Why? this have to do with fucking anything? Why? And I guess it maybe goes in line with one thing later on, maybe, but again, I feel like it's so out of place that it's just kind of like a Tarantino thing. Like it just happens and you're just okay, that yeah. happened. It's like, okay, well that's happening now, so And would, would yeah, you, I love some of their like 
the one dude's like, well, I mean, if they got pink hair, yeah, clearly, yeah, and they're some, sucking dick, yeah. Um, it's like, wait, what? And they, even, dude, I had pink hair once. Somebody even mentions curing no, homosexuality. Wait, oh yeah, there's like like I okay, but I watch played is like almost of like I watch everything with subtitles just to catch little shit like this, like just some of the shit like they're saying to one another is insane because like one of them's like well i mean if you have one of those bracelets that says you support gays, it's a rainbow it's then, a rainbow bracelet yeah, yeah then i mean that clearly makes you gay and it's one, very, one just it, like you can wear a bracelet and not be gay it's a very high school pre facebook kind of conversation yeah. that's going on like it's pseudo i i'm sorry to use that word again but it's like kind of trying to be progressive in the fact that they're having this conversation but I feel like no one in this group is is gay. Maybe the guy with glasses, maybe, but yeah, or at least based on maybe that's the problem is that I'm looking at him and I think he's he is. Yeah, and but like either way, you could literally take that. Con- you could put in like you could take the conversation out of this movie and it would have no effect on the movie whatsoever. You could cut this whole scene out. No, yeah, well. Well, you could up until a later point. You could literally just cut it from where it is until later on. Well, yeah, that's true. Um. But yeah, like this scene really has no weight in the movie. No. Like it doesn't really serve. I think in a lot of the movie is kind of fat. Yeah, you're and right. The movie is mostly composed of fat. I think. Yeah. Um, and then we cut back to Nathan and Karina, and I maybe I this I misunderstood this, but apparently uh, Nathan uh, is talking okay. to Carrie, and it says something about like, "Oh, you have an appointment or something." And is this like in like? And he's way, asking, he's like, did it have anything to do with you know last two weeks ago? Two whatever? weeks ago, at, when we went camping or something like that. Yeah, no, is that like an STD thing? I think, or maybe she a, thinks she's pregnant. Abortion kind of thing. Yeah. Is that what they're talking about? Why did your head go to STD? I don't know. I, I thought because the way two high school kids, yeah. one of them has an appointment and they're worried about something that happened when they spent the night together. And that you go STD like you go either way. Over I, Teen pregnancy is a real issue, Dustin. Teen STDs, STDs are a big concern. I haven't seen those numbers. <laughs> oh, either way, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'd much rather have AIDS than a baby. We cut to what is basically the crossroads in this movie. Uh, this 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 point between three different characters. Well, I guess four technic four four or five technically. But uh, Elias is walking down the hall, or John is walking down the hall. I'm sorry, we're following John. He meets up with. Eli, who is, uh, I don't think we ever got a, well, I guess we got a title card for him. He is the guy with the camera that was taking the photo of the punks earlier. Yeah, yeah. He comes across Eli, and I keep calling, want to call him Elias because the way they spell it, but John meets up with Eli. They say hi to we, each we other. Just call, let's just call him Eli. Okay. I like that, Elias. It's, it's, it's how it's spelled. It reminds me of Tobias. Yeah. Which, if you ever read the Animorphs books, <laughs> that was. Anyway. He, John, he was a bird. John says really hi like to, to Eli. Eli takes his photo. Fine, just ignore me. And we see Michelle running in the background as the bell rings. Uh, and we follow John some more. And it's one of those long follows again. And we go all the way out to the out... Which... I, nobody goes to class in this movie. No. But uh, he goes outside and there's a guy with a dog. And we get another one of these slow motion shots. And I think this was the first time I Why actually... Why is this in slow motion? I was going to say, I think this, I think I know why it is because he sees this dog and apparently he knows this dog. He like throws his hand up and the dog jumps like a trick. And this is when the camera slows down. And if you look in the background, you can see the next two characters we're about to talk to two guys dressed in military fatigue, carrying duffel bags that are walking towards the school. I think that's why this is your first kind of glimpse at them. But yeah, but who's paying attention to anything else when there's a puppy? Yeah. You see this. You, it's hard to tell because maybe this is like a defining moment. Maybe that's what it is. But then again, I don't know what it was for the girls saying that the guy was cute earlier. I don't know, but it, the camera kind of slows down. We see this dog jumping, and then it goes back to normal speed. And John sees these two guys entering, and they're, like I said, dressed to the nines and, and military fatigue and carrying duffel bags and everything. John says, hey, what are you guys doing? One of them replies, get the fuck out of here. Oh, don't come back. Some for, shit's about to go down. For all of our worried listeners, don't worry. The dog. I mean, not you die. can double check. Does the dog die? Dot com. The dog's fine. The dog is absolutely fine. Uh, but we get a title card of these two characters entering, and we get Eric and Alex. We got to what I'm assuming is flashback. Well, it's got to be. Uh, they're in, yeah. They're in this. Uh, Alex is in the science the science class, 
and someone throws a spitball at him. But oh. it doesn't doesn't use like the the classic straw spitball. It, they, it's like a glob. Yeah. Someone just tosses at him, which is fucking gross. First of all, um, he goes to the bathroom, wipes it off, and then we cut to him in the lunchroom. He's going down the lunchroom. Alex is the dark haired one. Right? Alex is the dark haired one, and the other one looks like the real some shady is yeah. Eric. He straight up looks like, and he's in a white tee later on. I was like, this dude looks like exactly like he would have been in that image right. video. So yeah, so Alex and Stan. Alex and Stan. Are. Alex is going down the lunch the the lunch line, uh, and he pulls up kind of like a a, a, fl- a flip pad, like a notepad. Yeah. I mean, he's writing something down, and this girl comes across. And says, "What are you doing?" Uh, and he says, uh, "Making a list." And she says, "For what?" And he said, "You'll see." But it's very. He kind of almost is like playing with her, like almost kind of a flirt. But he's again, yeah. not, he's not really acknowledging her or anything. And he walks around to the middle of the lunchroom and he kind of just stops and the lunchroom just starts getting increasingly louder and louder to the point where Alex kind of just like grips his head in pain. And know we, that feeling. We cut to noise. Eli and we get another long follow of Eli and he goes into a dark room because he's a, he's the photographer student. Nothing really happens here. We cut, uh, we get a title card, Michelle and Michelle is the nerdy girl we saw earlier with the glasses. Yeah. And I was just kind of staring in the space. Yeah, she's talking to her gym teacher, and her gym teacher is like, "Look, you, if you don't dress out in your physical education wears, you were gonna have to take off points from your grade because apparently she doesn't want to wear shorts." And they ask her why. She says, "Why don't you want to wear shorts?" She says, "I don't want to talk about it." Yeah. Um. Which. I don't know. Did you have? Did you guys have like? gym wear we did. in your high school we did we had, we had wash shirts it? yeah well we had oh. shirts and we had shorts and we didn't have pe every day so you could take it home and wash them but i never wore the shorts because shorts were ugly as shit see we had to wear we had to wear the shorts we had to wear the shirt no they were like you they, well, they told us we had to but we we didn't wear the shorts and our coach didn't care well, our coach did um he would make comments like you're supposed to be wearing shorts and we're like well eh, whatever um, why don't you think she likes wearing shorts? Do you think she's just not comfortable in her body? Do you think probably? Is, I mean, I think that's what they were kind of implying with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, she we kind of follow her for a little bit, but nothing again really happens. We cut back to Eli in the dark room, and he's shaking a film canister very methodically, like a metronome. And he goes on for, for some reason. I love that. I do too. It's, it's very so relaxing. It's so it's very quiet. All you hear is a little shaking of the can. And it goes on for a good 20 to 30 seconds. Just him doing oh, that. Oh, yeah, solid. Um, we cut back to Michelle. Michelle is in the locker room. Um, nothing really happens here again. Uh, Alex, we cut back to him. He goes home. And I got to say, I think only psychopaths drink milk straight. Not what? even. Who drinks a glass of milk, dude? Come on. This isn't 1950. And not even that, he doesn't even pour himself a glass of milk. He just drinks straight out the gallon. That is fucking disgusting. <laughs> Mally, do you drink milk? Okay, Mally's leaving. <laughs> do not go get a gallon of milk. I will throw up. Who does that, people? Do you drink straight from the milk carton? Like, just regular milk? I can understand maybe chocolate milk. At, and even lesser strawberry milk if you really got to do that. But just regular milk? You just drink that from a glass? This is Oh, that's fucking gross, dude. Uh, nah. Nah, nah. Ugh. It's 2% as well, so it's like delicious. That's fucking gross. Mm. Mm-mm. Do I have a milk mustache? No. Oh. I just have a regular one. Damn it. We come back to Eli again in the dark room, uh, and we, we get a long <sighs> follow of Eli, and this is that crossroads I was talking about, because it's the same scene we saw earlier of John and Eli where Eli takes his photo, but it's from Eli's perspective. So he meets up with John again. They say hi. He takes John's photo. We see Michelle running in the background. And we follow Eli into the library. And here we kind of intersect and we go with Michelle, who's also <coughs> in the library, because she apparently happens to work yeah. in the library. And she's putting away books on the shelf. And we cut back. We get another title card that says, Brittany, Jordan, and Nicole. And this is our trio of girls that we met earlier that were talking about Nathan and how cute he was. And this is actually the scene where we, we meet up with oh him for the first time. Uh, they have a conversation. I'm not sure which one is which. So one of the girls, the one that said he was cute earlier. Becky, Becky, and Becky? Yeah. Is Becky one. one. <laughs> now, um, one of them says, you know, he has a girlfriend. She says, he has a girlfriend since when? She seems very upset. 
Uh, they mentioned that, yeah, apparently uh, Carrie, who's Nathan's girlfriend, hit some girl last week for even smiling at Nathan. Apparently that Nathan smiled at her. She smiled back and Carrie hit the girl. And Carrie's a fucking psychopath. Carrie's a, Carrie's a beast. Uh, the trio go to lunch. I think this is maybe the longest winner out of the whole movie. The trio go to the lunchroom. They they get their is food. It? Huh? Is it? I think it might be because we follow the girls from there to the lunchroom. We follow them down the line. Then we kind of go around where we get to see uh, two cafeteria workers smoke a joint. That is so accurate. We go all the way around. We meet up with the girls as they're sitting down to eat. Uh, they see John outside. Uh, and then we come. And they just kind of say, oh, what's he doing? Okay, whatever. And then we see John apparently outside, but they don't see Eric and Alex. I don't believe yeah. in her. Because uh, this is right when that happens. Uh, one of the girls, the two, two of the girls are mad at one of the girls for hanging out too much with her boyfriend. And I gotta say, they eat super quick because this shot is probably only like this one or it's probably like what five to seven minutes, something like that. But I gotta put I put in parentheses on my notes. I said they do eat super quick. Dot dot dot. Wait for it. Uh, we kind of follow them out of the lunchroom, but we kind of intersect on other people's conversations. Yeah. Some random girl thinks she's a really good singer, but she's upset that her friend doesn't think so. I mean, that's, and again, that's very accurate because you meet, I meet so many people that are like, I'm like, because I play a lot of music, so I'm always, but I don't like singing, so I always find other yeah. people to sing for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like asking people like, oh, like you sing cool. Like you any good? And they're like, oh yeah, I'm a good singer. Then I hear him sing. I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. You're tone deaf as fuck. Uh, <laughs> and we fall. I don't, again, this is little nuanced things like this. We throughout this whole movie. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. No. It's just, we're kind of it, seeing. Like, it's great as far as like world building. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of just, again, this is just, we're just a fly on the wall of these characters lives yeah. in high school. That's it's really a just, and not even a full day of high school. This probably takes place all Within an hour, the actual yeah. events, I think, probably because yeah. it's within the lunch hour. Yeah, well, not so much. Well, yeah, lunch hour, a little spillover to post lunch. Yeah, uh, we follow the girls out of the bathroom and they go into the lunchroom. And my wait for it moment turns out they're all bulimic. Uh, of course, because they are. each enter a stall and begin. You hear them blah, throw it up. Yeah, blah, blah. we cut back to a flashback of Alex back at his house, and he's got his glass of milk and he's playing Beethoven on the piano. Yes, he does. And in enters his blonde friend Eric. That is absolutely fucking disgusting. <laughs> You're just mad because my bones are stronger. Let me ask you this: Do you eat cereal with like with with regular two percent milk or regular or whole milk or whatever? Or you don't use like soy milk or anything, right? Yeah. Okay. You use milk like a normal. When person. you after you eat your cereal, do you kind of drink your cereal? Fuck milk? yeah. Okay, that's okay. But you also drink. But like just like right now, me, I'm dr- I'm literally. There's no I'm, chocolate mix in that. No, it's There's just no- milk. What is? You were the kid that got the white milk carton in high school during lunch, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, you fucking weirdo. All right. Alex is again playing piano. <laughs> I was about to make the most inappropriate joke. It was a very <laughs> relevant joke, but it was very inappropriate. And I will save it until after we finish the discussion. All right. Uh, yeah. Alex pretty much plays all of Beethoven's piece. I can't remember. It's the, it's the famous Beethoven. Oh no. I was watching this movie like in the trailer. Yeah. Like, Oh, this is really cool. Like, you know, I like, they worked this song in he then three the, minutes later. I was like, this should fucking end. Yeah. He's playing the entire, it's uncomfortably long. And Eric kind of plays on a laptop, a really shitty first person shooter game. <laughs> oh, it's God it's awful. awful. It's worse than Wolfenstein, man. It's awful. Looking. Like, this was 2003. I gotta assume... Oh, you could have gotten... You know, this is the trivia, right? Is that the, the, the characters in the game he's playing are the characters from Jerry. Because they're in the desert and he even shoots... Oh, fuck! Yeah, which I thought was kind of funny. That's amazing. But it's a really shitty... I would not play this game, even if it was free. Um, And Alex... Kind of, well, I mean, come on, free... I still wouldn't play it. You would give it a shot. Alex, uh, give it a shot. Quits playing. Yeah, quits playing up. piano. He kind of like slams his hands down at the end of the piece, and uh, he casually starts looking up guns on his laptop at like a Guns America website. I think is what it was called. And then we get another long, ominous but beautiful shot of just the dark sky as, as clouds are rolling and a storm's approaching. And we stay on the shot for a long time. 
we cut we kind of get like a top down view of this room and Alex and Eric are sleeping. Yup. And the next morning we're at breakfast. Woo! And the two are eating breakfast. And I gotta say, hey, meal of the day. And I gotta say that my next note is will the real Slim Shady please stand up because Eric has got the white tee and his blonde beach bleach blonde hair. Yeah, it just, it's he looks exactly like he was in that rough. video. Uh they, I guess they skipped school because they're watching a documentary on Hitler and the Nazis and a delivery truck shows up and the guy even makes a comment, oh, you guys must not have school today and drops off a package. And I kind of, he, he opens it up and it's, what well, it looks kind of like an M16. It's not an M16, but it's it's just a full on assault rifle. And I can yeah. ask, is it really, or was it really that easy to get a gun in 2000? Well, this is technically supposed to be the early, the late 90s, but I feel like even that, I the, mean... They should Probably. have had to sign for that or something. But yeah, they they have an assault rifle. They take it out to the garage and they just start firing into a bunch of firewood in the garage. It's an assault rifle. Yeah. Yeah, they're firing an assault rifle in a garage. In just like Which has got to be loud. Neighborhood. Yeah, it's that's already, loud as fuck. It's already loud shooting an assault rifle, but when you're in that closed space like that, that's awful. Um, We... Get one more of these crossroad long follows, and this time it's of Michelle. Mm-hmm. We kind of she's kind of walking through the hall, keeping to herself. She's John and Eli, uh, Eli are in the background. Eli takes John's photo. Like earlier, the bell rings, and she kind of hurries up because she realizes she's late, and uh, she goes into the library. She, you know, the the librarian says, oh, "I'm glad you're here. I just need to start putting away some of these books." Eli enters in after her. Uh, and she she does she starts she pulls her her cart over it's got all the books on it to the shelf starts filing books away she probably gets maybe two books on the shelf yeah and we hear a gun cock off screen and she kind of turns around and looks and we cut to the next scene of course and it's another flashback it's Alex in the shower and Eric enters I'm assuming this is probably that morning the morning before school yeah I'm assuming so. Eric just kind of enters the shower with him, just very casually. and Very casually. But Alex seems like he's kind of like... Like well, he's like, oh, what's up, dude? Well, Eric's like that, but I feel like Alex is kind of like, well, what are you doing? But it's quick to be like, oh, okay, I guess this is yeah. what's happening. Like, oh, this is happening now? All right. And Eric mentions that he's never kissed anyone, and they kiss, which we kind of stay out of the shower, so we don't really get to see it, and it's really right, fogged but, up. Yeah, you but see you can, it through the door. You can kind of tell, yeah. Just, like... I don't know, that's just a weird scene. Well, I was going to ask, do you think that has anything to do with this the scene in earlier with the discussion of can you decide if someone's gay just by looking at it? Because I'm pretty sure that's the only reason that scene exists. I mean, that's for the this. only connection you could but really make. I, I got to say, I don't think these two are gay. I really think, I don't think either don't one really of them think is. I think it's, re- it's not really relevant. It's not relevant, way. but I mean, the movie puts it here, so we should talk about it. Yeah. I don't think they are. I don't. If they are, fine, whatever. But I really think it's just that thing. And like Eric says, I've never even kissed anyone. Alex kisses him. Why not? Yeah. I mean, based on what they have planned ahead, I'm pretty sure that's, you know. Yeah, because isn't one of, like, as he's getting in the shower, one of them's like, so we're going to die today. Oh, I didn't even, I missed that part. Oh, yeah. I think, I want to say it's at, like, when Eric opens the door, Alex just looks like, he's like, so we're going to die today. Yeah, maybe I guess that's why he's so casual about the shower and everything. Yeah. Um, <coughs> they plan out a, a school <coughs> shooting with blueprints of the school. Yeah, uh, they they mention that they're gonna plant explosions with pipe bombs. Um, and I gotta say, the first shot we hear in the movie is a really quick shot, and it's like from a first a POV shot, like the first person shooter game that yep. Eric is playing, and it's really quick. It's probably like a two second shot. And we see a character fall down after a gun. Because we see in the camera like the end of the gun barrel right yeah. in front of us. It's just like the game they were playing. And they have at least five guns. They mentioned he's got a twenty two, a pistol, uh, a shotgun, and two uh, assault rifles. Yeah. Or one assault rifle and I think a Tech 9. Something like that. I don't remember the exact A lot of list. guns. Um, he tells him, you know, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, then we're going to meet up here. And he says, all right, man, that's the plan. And remember, most importantly, have fun. Which yeah, is a, dude, that's that. I think at this point in the movie, even if you did, you went into this movie baby faced, you know what's gonna happen, and that's a very like, yeah, like this was like like 
because they obviously they were kind of hint towards it every all this happening. But even at this point, I was just like, oh fuck, like this is really where the movie's going. Oh yeah, shit, yeah. And they gloss over it like it's a nothing line, but that's the most chill. That that line could have been in the trailer to throw people off. I think. Yeah, that would have been a good trailer line. But yeah, it's very just have fun. That's it. Uh, they get into the car, uh, in Alex's car, and he has a devil air freshener, which on the uh, rearview mirror, which I thought that was interesting. And they have a like silent, they have a silent car ride all the way to school. Awkward as shit. Yep. Uh, Alex enter the school. This is kind of like the shot we saw earlier of John making the dog do the trick, but this is from Alex and Eric's perspective. Um, and they enter the school, and John, we cut, we kind of cut to John's perspective. And he tries to stop people from going in, and no one seems to listen to him. But he's not really putting that much effort into it. He's kind of just like, hey, don't don't go in there. I wouldn't go in there. Please don't go in there. And everyone's kind of like, whatever, kid. Um, and we see Alex and Eric kind of standing in the little hallway in their military garb with guns out. Just kind of standing there. And apparently they're realizing that no explosions are going to go off. And so they're like, oh, fuck it. Let's go to plan B. And we cut back to John. Turns out John's dad is missing because he's he goes back to the to his car and his dad's not yeah, there. He's not there. And again, he's just he's just kind of just trying. To, hey, sir, please don't go in there. That's really the emotional level and cadence that he's got while he's doing this. Like he really should probably say something yeah. a little more uh, enthusiastically. Be they start casually strolling. Alex and Eric start casually strolling to the school with their guns out. Like very casually, just very fucking casually, and they enter the library, and this is right uh, with the last little crossroads section we have right after Michelle and Eli had entered, and this is, it's gonna be hard to put the word favorite on it, but this is my favorite set of shots in the movie, because Alex and Eric Fucked enter, up, well Alex and Eric enter, no one's really paying attention to them, uh they they enter the room. They one of them cocks their gun, the same gun cock I heard earlier. Eli turns to him. He's probably five, six feet away from him, Something maybe a little like further. It, yeah. Doesn't emote or anything. He just kind of takes his camera up and takes a photo. And Alex, oh, yeah, dude, because you know art. Well, so. he takes the photo, and he, uh, Alex kind of turns to him before he takes the photo and almost kind of poses. He kind of just looks at him with like a face. Eli takes the photo, and Alex kind of just like. Does a thing of like, he kind of like lets his gaze fall off and he's just kind of like, all right. And he shoots Michelle instantly. In Michelle is the first one to go, but the I, head. I, I, I just thought it was those, those series of shots of them entering. We kind of swoop the camera kind of swoops around to their face. Alex is kind of looking around. Eli looks at him, takes her photo. Alex looks at Eli kind of almost kind of nods his head and looks off and just, Shoots a girl in the head. Like, yeah. it's a weirdly macabre, but beautiful series of shots. And I, I will I give like you that. I'll give you that. I like it from a filmmaking standpoint, not from a subject matter. Right, point. right. And I got to ask, he shoots another person right to shoot Michelle, but this person's kind of like out of focus in the background. Is this Eli that he shoots? I was going to ask you that. Because I, I had a, I had a discussion with my so. girlfriend, and she swears it's obviously him because he's such close proximity, and it is a white guy that gets shot. But I don't think it is because Eli has on like this dark coat and like a light colored shirt with his ca- and his camera around his neck. And this guy that gets shot in the background just has a dark shirt. Like no or even a dark coat, no light color turned underneath it. So I can't tell if it's Eli or not. And Eli is the only character we don't get to see what happens to him unless this is his death scene and it's just glossed over and you don't get to see it. I mean, yeah, I thought it was him. I don't think it is. But maybe it's just me. I don't know. It doesn't look like him that much. Um, but yeah, the people in the libraries freak out and they take off running. We cut to Nathan and Carrie and they hear gunfire in the, out in the hallways. And I think one of them says, oh, it must be firecrackers. Right? Is, is yeah, it yeah. Okay. Uh, we cut back to the trio, the th- three girls that were puking earlier and everyone's screaming and they're kind of just giggling like oh what's that oh someone's playing a joke and they're doing their makeup and this girl kind of enters freaked out and hides in the stall and the girls call her a bitch because they say hey how you going she runs into the stall and they're like all right fine be a bitch then yeah but then 
Alex enters the bathroom. And they all kind of back away. We hear him cock his gun, and we cut to the next scene. Yeah, so which is back to the the the, the, the quote unquote AA meeting yeah, room, but it's about the, the the gay discussion. Yeah, that's right. So we don't get to see if Alex. I'm assuming we the three girls are dead. Um, uh, we cut back to the discussion. They hear gunfire, and one of them, somebody else makes a comment. What's that? Oh, it must be it must be firecrackers. This kid Nate, who's kind of a he's not even really a character. He's just somebody just said no, my he's name. Just a dude. He gets up and walks to the door to see what's going on outside and gets shot. Yeah, like he looks like he walks out, turns. He's like, it kind of looks like he sees something in the hallway and then just boom. Yeah, dead. He's on the floor. And everyone thinks, oh, he's playing around until they go to pick They're him like, up. Oh, come on, man. Get up, Nate. Come on, Nate. They're get like, up. oh, fuck. He's shot. And then, yeah, he just leaves a trail of blood under his shoes. So, uh, man. So. One of the co- one of the characters in this room before Nate gets shot even says, somebody says, what is that? And they say, don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Yeah. Which I thought was very strange. Because um, this whole movie, everyone's kind of just casually going about. No one really... I mean, the trio of girls kind of freak out when Alex enters. But everyone's very kind of like... But it's not until they're literally in front of the gun barrel do, does anyone panic. And I think maybe that's because... what like Columbine was, at the time, like the biggest school shooting of like modern America, right? Like, Well, yeah. Like this... Like I feel like... I, I don't want to say it was unheard of, but it was just like... There's like 30 people that either got shot or were injured. Yeah. Really. So like, it was a lot. Like I don't... Like school shootings weren't like unheard of like happened they happened before, and i even like, looked into it there was like occasionally like one a year it would be like one to five people yeah. and maybe one person but like it was just like, before columbine like it was one of those things where it's like well that's you know never and i happen. think on this scale too like they entered in with a lot of weapons yeah. and explosions planted even in the movie sense it's the same way so i think that's kind of what it was too is that this was a very methodical planned out not just an act of aggression but yeah <clears throat> um it's just you know i mean it's one of those things like when you're living your life like you don't expect like it's but now we're not on something you expect to have at least but... i could say for myself i'm on guard constantly now, oh yeah for sure so, um someone tries to break a window to escape and we cut to a large uh black athletic guy yeah. i think he i don't know if he was playing football earlier i think he was he might have i think he was and he's walking down the hall while everyone else is trying to run um and it's super ominous because we, we're behind him and he's like a silhouette basically walking down this hall and no one's really screaming or crying. They're just kind of, people are just kind of just trying to get away. And he turns off, he turns a corner and there's just a large fire going off in the hallway that he just kind of ignores. He kind of just walks right around and he's got a very like focused, well, we don't get to see his face, but like the way he's walking, he's very kind of focused. He enters the room where like the, the gay discussion meeting was going on and Acadia is in there. Who's just kind of standing there with like her arms folded, looking at the floor, and he kind of like just casually helps her out the window, which she didn't really necessarily need help out the window. She could have easily got out, but he kind of just like motions her to the window, walks with her, lets her get out, and then re-enters the hallway. And we get a title card that says Benny. Yeah. So this guy's character's name is Benny. Uh, he's the only character I'm in mean, this that's not introduced before the shooting. Yeah, he's like introduced literally during the shooting. Uh. Eric finds a teacher, Mr. Lewis, um, who is trying to help a student get out of the hallway. He shoots him once. Mr. Lewis falls to the ground. Uh, he says, Eric, put that gun away. We can talk about this. Eric says, I ain't putting down shit. I ain't, I ain't putting shit I ain't down. I shit down. We cut to John finding his dad outside the school. Uh, there's smoke coming from the building. We hear a little mini explosion go yeah. off. Uh, we cut back to Benny, and Benny's trying to sneak up on Eric, but not really. Like, he's trying to, but... Yeah, that was weird. I don't... I wish we could have at least seen a little more of Benny in his story, but... Yeah. He sneaks up on Eric. He probably gets maybe eight feet, nine feet away from him. Eric turns around and shoots him once in the chest, and he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eric turns back to Mr. Lewis, and Eric's not... I don't want to say he's not cut out for this, but Alex is very, I think he's very intelligent. I think he's very yeah, that's, mature. Yeah, he's definitely the more mature. Sm- Eric is almost one. kind of like masturbatory doing all of this. Yeah. Because he says, you know, he makes another chilling, one of the other chilling lines in this movie. He says to Mr. Lewis, he goes, you know, there's others out there like us. 
Mm-hmm. And he tells him, Mr. Lewis, to get up and run away before he changes his mind. But he just shoots him in the back yeah. anyway. And Alex, we cut to Alex, who's jogging down the hallway. And he stops to shoot someone. We don't really get to see. But it almost feels like he's like a bad first-person shooter player. Like, he's kind of jogging down the hallway. He kind of stops like a video game character. Aims his gun, shoots, and then starts jogging again. It's, I yeah. just thought it was very weird. Uh, <clears throat> Nathan and Carrie are running away. And they they kind of st- come, come to a stop near the lunchroom. And then in the background, we see a character out of focus walking by. They say, oh, shit, there he is, running high. They run into the lunchroom. And we get a, another one of my favorite shots again. I love this one, dude. It's a very long shot. It's kind of blocked off. It's out of focus. Nathan and Carrie exit the frame. And we see the character in the very back slowly just start approaching the camera. Getting a little bit, little bit, little bit more in focus and focus until finally we realize it's Alex. And he's, you know, got his gun out and everything. He's kind of just looking around. He enters the lunchroom and he nonchalantly just kind of sits down in front of this table and drinks from a cup that's on a tray because assuming uh, presumably the lunchroom was filled with in fact there's dead bodies all over this lunchroom yeah. floor uh, everyone is scattered he kind of just takes a sip of a cup from a tray and apparently this actually happened uh, in the in, uh, apparently yeah, one of the I shooters remember, at columbine yeah took, i remember just hearing about that casually took a drink from somebody's cup he uh we hear eric off screen say i wouldn't do that you'll get herpes or something alex kind of laughs a little bit he says how did you do we camera kind of turns around we see eric and he says oh you know I, sh- I shot a couple people i shot the principal and in mid sentence alex just shoots him right in the chest yeah like n- no second thoughts just immediately dies uh he hears a noise coming from the back of now... oh sorry go on go, no, go ahead wait what's up no did, is that was that something from real life that he sh- no they well they shot themselves Okay. In the library, I think. Um, no, I, I don't think one of them shot the other one. Okay, uh, I could be mistaken, but I don't think so. Uh, Alex hears a noise, and he he goes into the back of the uh, the kitchen in the lunchroom and finds Nathan and Carrie hiding in the freezer. And he even says, "Look who it is." So, assuming uh, presumably he knows them, but they don't really have any interactions. I don't think, unless Nathan was in the class where Alex got a spitball thrown at him, but I don't think he was. Do you remember if he was or not? No. Um, we see we kind of get this wide shot of Alex in the freezer, looking to his left, screen left, and Nathan and Carrie kind of back away from the door, presumably going further back into the freezer to try and like shield themselves. And uh, so that's all we see is just Alex, and we hear Nathan and Carrie saying, "You know, don't do this. What are you doing?" And Alex just, just starts playing eeny, meeny, miny, mo with him. Uh, Which. Very fucked up. Fucked. Like, there's. <coughs> okay. It's like the Negan thing, but way worse. <laughs> yeah, like. Fuck The Walking Dead. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Like, a bunch of stuff happens in this fucking movie. Like, and it's all fucked up. Blah, blah. This is by far. This is the most. Fu- I did, like. It's it's very yeah because we don't get to see it, it happen. If, if yeah, you don't you don't see like it cuts away. Yeah, well, it's like if he's they doing if this... it had just shown him like just straight shooting them both in the head, I don't think it would have been as hard hitting. But the fact that it's just eeny meeny miny mm-hmm. black, yeah, like that the, is the camera. The camera's kind of like dollying out as he's doing it. And before he even finishes the, the, the poem, it just cuts to another long shot of the sky. And the clouds start rolling in, storm starts approaching, and then we see the credits kind of roll up, and that's it, man. We don't get to see if anyone uh, died but in the, in the freezer, but that's it. So, <laughs> I'm sorry I put you through this one, Mally, and to our listeners, but Holy fuck. I Thank think God it's a good... for this comforting beverage. I think it's a good movie, though. It's, I don't want to say, you know, it's, it does anyone justice because there's not really much you can do in the situation, the character, the real life situation that, that people killed themselves. So, um, I've only got like, Fuck, man. I've only got three little pieces of trivia I'd like to talk about that I think are relevant. All right, let's hear it. So the, the title elephant, a lot of people don't. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that. A lot of people just don't seem to understand. Well, 
Gus Van Sant borrowed the title from an Alec Clark film uh, that was called Elephant. And Gus Van Sant thought that the title referred to the idea of like of of this like old school uh, proverb about uh, somebody led five blind men to an elephant and gave them each a limb or something like that. And the idea was that they're blind, so they can't even see. They just assume that what they're eating or so. I don't know the actual full story of it, but I mean. Alan Clark says no. It's the idea, you know, the elephant in the room, the 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 classic, you know, kind of uh, colloquialism. I can never pronounce that word. Just the, the the idea that that something could be so obvious, and everyone either willfully ignores it out of stupidity or apathy. Yeah, and that's uh, obviously Alex and Eric's homicidal rage. Uh, you know, everyone can, can if they look at it, they can see that these kids are troubled, but they just choose to ignore it. Uh, almost all the kids in the film are non-actors, and their real first names are used, for the most part. I think there's like one or two that don't use their real names. And I that's why... That huh? Whenever I noticed that whenever you're reading off the cast list, like, they, yeah, it's just their and real And that's, that's why, yeah, that's why there's so many people listening to the cast, is because every character is a real... is their, The actor is the real character. Is the character. And this might might surprise you, might not, but this movie is actually based on a short story written by fellow uh, friend to Gus Van Sant and screenwriter uh, Harmony Korean, who made Kids, which is a very similar kind of movie. Uh, yeah, Gummo, reading... Spring Breakers. Gummo, God. I fuck with Spring Breakers. I love Spring Breakers. Maybe we could do that movie. I like Kids. I like Kids a lot. Fuck Gummo. I've though. actually never seen Gummo. Oh my God, it's... I, okay, it's. I need to rewatch it because it's been years since I've seen it. But yeah. Shit, this movie makes so much more sense knowing that that it's based off. It feels like oh, a Harmony Corinne yeah, movie. Yeah, it really does. Um, and that's all I got for trivia, man. So, <sighs> all right, this is gonna be the hard part. Let's let's put this. <clears throat> I want to put a prerequisite on our <clears throat> silver lining this this week. I don't want to mention Columbine. I mean, I don't want to. To take our silver lining and tarnish what happened. Oh uh, no, strictly, no, no! Strictly the movie. Yeah, just all, we're not taking any factual information from the actual Columbine shooting into play. This is strictly what we see in the movie, the characters in the movie. That whether they're based on real people or not is not relevant in terms of what we're doing here. So, Mally, for the characters in the movie and how the movie itself, what silver lining, if any? And this is the hard part. If there if there is a silver lining that we can mine from the end of this movie, I mean, I got one. Okay, but I might be an awful person for it. I know what you're gonna say because I think I had the same kind of idea. Because again, with a movie like this, you really got to reach for something, and it's always not necessarily the best. So, go ahead. I mean, at least Michelle doesn't have to worry about wearing shorts in gym class anymore. I mean, it, it's not... I, I don't want to laugh because it's not... I mean, it's kind of funny, but in rel- in terms of what happened, no, it's not funny. But that, I'll give you that. It's G- it's something. Full? It's something, yeah. It's looking on the bright side, at least to the most minute you know, sense. And that bright side is <laughs> dark. I've got two. Um, well, actually three. Maybe even four, but they're not what even. What the fuck? They're not. They're not like they're kind of like yours. They're not great. Okay. Uh, I gotta say, at least John found his dad, and I think. Oh yeah. I think the situation will kind of maybe help their relationship. Maybe even help John's dad with his alcoholism. Um, I gotta say that Eric is dead, so at least one of the killers true, did. Did we true. did get to see him die? Something a little minute. I want to add on to that. At least Eric did get to kiss someone before he died, and whether or not. Also he was a good true. he was a good person or not it's not in terms of the characters themselves you know you're never your own you're always the protagonist of your own story you always think you're doing the right thing so at least for his perspective he got that and john could have at least prevented we don't necessarily get to see an exact number but john did i think at least prevent a few people from going into the school after this all went down yeah so i think all of those together does culminate to at least a C plus something on this episode. So 
Holy shit. Uh, that's what I got. So that's Elephant. If you haven't seen it, I still don't. Suggest, I think you should see it, man. It's a good movie. And like you said, for nothing else, at least the atmosphere. It's the filmmaking of it. It's an yeah. interesting I'm watch. so back and forth. I keep I can't decide if I like this movie. It's not a movie I you watch regularly. Hate it. It's like Record for Your Dream. You watch or Blue Valentine. Okay, you mister. Watch it. Oh, I'm gonna watch Barry eight times a week. No. Yeah. <laughs> you watch this Fuck movie you. maybe once a year. <laughs> maybe twice if you're ballsy, but I haven't seen this movie since the first time I saw it, which when I was I think again, I think I was like eighteen. Um Mm-mm. how about this? Mm-mm. We've had a lot of downer down or down or talk this this episode yeah this is, if no other episode this is one that definitely needs a pick me up movie to watch after oh my it. god please uh, what's a good double feature people can have for this movie after they watch elephant i based mine off around the characters of the beckys um whatever the, the trio their names was the, uh, the the trio the bulimic girls yeah and that led me up the road to Mean Girls. It's a good one. It is a great one. Also ties in with the whole high school aspect. If you're from Africa, why are you white? <laughs> you can't just ask people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an infinitely quotable movie, too. Oh, my God. It is. Uh, I'm going to go with a similar route. I'm going with another high school movie, The Breakfast okay. Club. Because I think that is Fuck a fucking great choice. That's a good one. Um, both. Hey, both. Hey. Both of our movies, high school movies, both have characters that aren't necessarily likable, but at least there's comedy in both of ours. It's definitely something you'll enjoy after watching Elephant. Yeah. Do not watch Elephant by itself and then just go about your day. Oh, you mean like I fucking did yesterday? And no one told you. You could have watched Mean Girls after that. I might have. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so that is this episode, Elephant 2003, Gus Van Sant. Would you recommend anyone watch this movie, Molly? I think we kind of already... No! Yeah, okay. I'll say, yeah, go for it. Uh, please subscribe and rate on iTunes since you're already there. Leave us some feedback. You can also go over to facebook.com slash the Silver Linings Playlist. Oh, I'm sorry, just Silver Linings Playlist. No, the. And leave us a suggestion, like our page. You changed the title and didn't tell me about it, man. <laughs> You also, we actually moved our feed now over to, to my website, DustinGoesToHollywood.com slash SLP for Silver Linings Playlist. You can find all the episodes there. You can download them uh, at MP3 file of the episodes if you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, clue for next week. Oh, it is a very special episode. It's a very special episode. Very And we're super episode. excited for this one. I am stoked. So what do you want to give us? Clue for next week. Probably the most misquoted movie of all time. Probably. At least one specific quote of this movie is probably the most misquoted thing of all time. Absolutely. All right. So that is this week's episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Matt, do you have anything you want to talk about? As always, Excelsior. Excelsior.